you wanted to see it. I guess it's time to do it. So for the last three years, I've been asked by a number of people what I would do with the shavings. Uh, now these are from uh, the roughing out video from three weeks ago. And you know, they're good clean shavings. These can be composted, they can be used as mulch. If you want to go down and chuck them in the woods, it's an all natural material. Nature will break it down, no harm, no foul. Of course, once the resin is combined with them, that's a different story. But uh, a number of people have asked me want me to make something with this stuff and i'll be honest with you that i i've seen examples of shavings like this combined with resin and i'm just not a fan uh usually they're full of bubbles uh we'll address that with putting um this piece in the vacuum chamber hopefully and um i don't know it may be one of the coolest things we've made so far but it may be one of the most hideous things that we've made so far. So I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, for your information, there are walnut shavings in here. That's what the dark ones are. Uh, this is maple, and there might actually even be a little bit of pine in here as well. So I was going for the two-tone look. I think that if we're gonna do this, that I think that's kind of the direction I wanna go with this, and I wanna make this into a hollow form. All right, so let's get our bucket out. Uh, the other thing too, I really, when you pull on this piece, it doesn't break apart. This is side grain. Let's see if I can find an end grain piece here. Yeah, so it's, I realize it's kind of small, but this is end grain, so it just breaks apart. So ideally, We'd use long stringers like this that are not going to break down. Like I can't, I can have a hard time pulling that apart. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I think I might just try and crush this stuff up. I've got a big bag of it, so it's not really a concern of volume. And then, you know, we'll just move it out of the way, move the fine material away until, you know, we can get hopefully the majority of this down. All right, let's get her done. So 100% going into this, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this and I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm just going to be wasting resin. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I, I didn't think that this thing was going to work out as good as it did. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you guys to, to judge it. But, uh, you know, uh, getting rid of that real fine material, I think will make the piece look cleaner. And that's why I want to get rid of any of the little floaty bits. That's going to be a pine one. I think we'll. Now this stuff that's here all by itself, the fine material, it might look good too. It may look good combined with the long stuff too. But you know, <coughs> well, if this if this is received well in the future, maybe we'll do some stuff with the smaller stuff. I might hold on to it too. Getting rid of the <laughs> the shavings that have a really bright appearance like that pine did, I think was also a smart thing to do. Uh, you would have been looking at this and then all of a sudden there would have been this oddly colored shaving in there. So that's why I get rid of it. Is that enough? Let's get our bucket and find out. That's about five and three quarters high. Uh, when you push it down though, in a second, takes it down to about four inches. So I want to be sitting at uh, around six inches or so. I should also mention that these are dry. Uh, it's been in my clean room now for a better part of three weeks. And uh, you definitely want these shavings dry before you cast them because if you don't, you're probably going to end up with some issues. Yeah, well, that's crushed down. It's about six inches ish. I'll put this stuff back in the bag. There'd be lots here for another project.
It just stays together pretty good. All right, so that's ready. Uh, let's mix up some resin. I have no idea how much this is going to take, but we'll uh, we'll get started and figure it out as we go. Since this is a deep pour, we're going to be using deep casting epoxy from Designer Epoxy. I also have a major announcement in regards to Designer Epoxy at the end of the video, so please stick around for that. I figured that it was probably best to tint this epoxy because that way maybe it would mask any of the undesirable areas, if you will. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what people think about that. So that's why I tinted it and I didn't leave it clear. Maybe the next one we'll do clear. All right, this is the first liter and a half. One of probably three, if I had to guess. Here's another liter and a half. No sign of it yet. You're right back. This will bring it to four and a half liters. <laughs> Where is it all going to? Is there a hole in that bucket? This will bring it to six liters. That's just, I'm shocked by that. It's finally starting to stick around. We're gonna push down on this, so hopefully that's gonna give us a little resin reservoir at the top when we're put this in the vacuum chamber. Yeah, finally. <sighs> Just a little MDF to keep the shavings from floating. We'll get Dwayne. We'll get Dwayne on the case here. Guess we'll find out. Vacuum chamber coming up. Okay, I've got it set so that you should be able to see the gauge here and watch the bubbles, which there should be a ton of them. Contact. I do think that one of the keys to success here is using the vacuum chamber. Uh, Deepcast does have a long open time and keep in mind that you're not dealing with a solid block of wood that's going to continue to release bubbles. So maybe the vacuum chamber isn't needed in that regard. But Deepcast has got a real long open time. So with those shavings sitting in the epoxy, maybe it's not needed maybe the, the the shavings are so thin that it will allow the epoxy to penetrate into them and release those bubbles and it won't be an issue uh if we do another one maybe we'll do it without the vacuum chamber and then we can compare the results against this one but it'd be interesting to hear if other people have tried doing this and what the results were Well, that's it. I can't pull any more vacuum than that. I'm going to keep doing this for, it, it's almost a full vacuum, I think. Yeah, 29 inches of vacuum. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing this for probably like another half hour or so. And uh, then it'll go into the pressure pot. But I'll be surprised if I'm able to leave the pump on. Maybe a little later on, I might be able to leave the pump on and not have to, to fool around with the, uh, the vents here. Anyway, I'll talk to you here in a bit.
Well, I'm finally able to pull full vacuum. Uh, that's taken about an hour, more than an hour actually. So I'm just gonna let this go for another 10 minutes and then I'll throw it in the pressure pot and we'll see you guys in there in three days. Well, we are out of the pressure pot. It's three days later. I'll be honest with you that I'm surprised that uh, to see resin on the top of this. I thought that these wood shavings would absorb all that resin. I was really anticipating that being lower. So far, I don't see any thermal cracks. Uh, we'll get this rock off and we will have a look underneath of it. But fingers crossed, we don't have it. Don't see any thermal cracking. So far, so good. Was I wish all the buckets were like that. Do not see any thermal cracks. Well, I must say that's impressive. This is six inches deep, well past the manufacturer's recommended depth of pour. Don't see any cracks at all. Great. All right, so we got a center there. Well, what do you think so far? Um, now that I get some blade on here, I can... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's trim this up. Starting off with the Hercules here from Hunter Tool Systems. This is the larger number three. Uh, this cut actually very nicely on the outside. Uh, not so much on the inside, but on the outside it was actually cutting quite cleanly. And uh, you'll see throughout this video that as I work this piece, you know, it, it, it starts to grow on me and, and I kind of welcome it. It kind of reminds me of a glue lamb beam. And in the future, if I do do another one of these, I would like to see if I can compress the shavings a little tighter to give maybe more of a glue lamb beam appearance. I have seen examples of that here on YouTube and on the internet, and it actually looks pretty neat. Uh, you'll have to look that up if you're curious to see what a glue lamb beam looks like. But it's compressed wood fibers, essentially what this is. But... Uh, compressed a lot more than than what I've done in this video so right now the goal here is just to get this thing running true strip off all of the excess epoxy and then stand back and look at it and make a determination what's going to be up and what's going to be down So for those who are curious, I'll do a little forest fire uh, update <laughs> here for Ontario and Quebec. Um, I, I was having a hard time finding how many active forest fires there are in Quebec, but right now in Ontario, the province, the province of Ontario, there's 27 active forest fires. And actually our area is uh, actually green, I think. I think there is still a fire ban on because they can't afford to have another fire get away. Uh, from people camping and this kind of business, but uh, it's 
the situation here in Ontario has certainly improved. Uh, Quebec is still battling a lot of forest fires, but I couldn't really get a, a number on uh, how many how many forest fires are active in Quebec, but it's it's still quite red. I would say probably half of the province is red. So uh, it's still a thing. The air quality here has improved. I haven't really noticed any smoke in maybe two or three days. Uh, it is definitely more hazier than it usually is, but it has been just absolutely crazy hot here. It was 40 degrees Celsius on our back deck and the winds are just, there is no wind, it's just still and it is as humid as you can imagine. So uh, I've had the AC unit running in my workshop 24 hours a day to try and keep up with it because it's just unbearable out there if, if I don't have uh, the AC unit running and of course if I've got the fan on then I can't really do much filming because it messes with the camera and the uh, the audio. So that's kind of a, a, a little brief summary of what's happened this week anyway and uh, thank you for your concern. Still lots of comments about uh, the forest fires and, and there are still lots of people coming from all over the world to uh to deal with these forest fires all the way from australia too so that's very cool uh and we certainly do appreciate it um that is for sure so i've determined that i want the top to be the bottom and vice versa uh, i did have that mdf in the top of the casting so i figured that you know that would make a decent tenon uh, a little bit of wood there anyway and as long as you can get a good bite on the resin in the wood then it should work for you uh, i prefer to mount pieces with integral tenons in the chuck glue blocks are fine but keep in mind that glue blocks can fail so you know trying to eliminate one of the things that can go wrong when you're wood turning is preferable So that's a good way to ruin your casting. Uh, if you go back and watch that footage again, you'll see me tilt basically the cutter down where it's almost straight up in the air and on the right side of the cutter on that curve. And you know, I know better than that and that's why that bad catch happened. Luckily, there was still lots of material that I planned on removing there. But you know, it's when you're, when you're working with a tool like this essentially you can treat it like a gouge like that cut right there the cutter is being supported by the bevel on the tool that cut is fine there as well because it's a pull cut and it's at a 45 degree angle and i'm taking very light cuts but when that cutter flipped over on its right side and contacted the casting like it did there was no support there for it and that's why it caught bad and it was even worse, it was even compounded because it was on a curve and not on a straight as well. So, you know, if, <laughs> you got to be careful or else uh, you could really destroy your, your piece that you're working on. And especially this thing's got, I've got a fair bit of money tied up in this because of the six liters of resin. The wood is not so much the the expense here. It's, well, it's usually the resin is the, or the epoxy is the expense in these projects anyway. But you can certainly pay a lot of money for wood pieces too, that's for sure. Well, what do you think? A um, little undecided as to what direction to go in. I debated on moving this down and then just sweeping it in and making a small opening for a hollow form. Uh, I thought about basically leaving 
this lip right here and then taking out the rest of this and that way be kind of a semi-enclosed bowl. I'm not so sure if I like this straight edge on the back so I may taper that off slightly. Um, but I do like this detail. I just might make it bigger. I don't know. But I thought that I would actually just use a little bit of denatured alcohol and show you what this thing looks like. So I don't know. Is it cool or is it not? Hmm. We'll see when it's all polished out. I just need to think on this a little bit longer and I'll get, get back in here in a second. So that cut that I had the catch on, I'm going to do this again, but this time there's going to be a, be a big difference. The whole time the bevel is in contact with the wood as I swing that handle around and I don't tilt the cutter to the right. That's why it caught the first time and not this time. So I'm still kind of flying by the seat of my pants, if you will, on this piece. I haven't totally figured out exactly what I want to do yet. Uh, I really love the freedom of just throwing a piece on the lathe and turning it on and start whittling stuff away and see what what it becomes, what what it you know, let it speak to you, if you will. And I don't want that to sound too trippy or hippie, but, you know, it's one of those things that when you're working on pieces like this, that as I'm working on them, I'm always wrestling in my head with what's, what's going to be best for the piece. And uh, I know that I'm not alone in that regard. I know that some people go to the lathe with a clear-cut plan as to what they're going to make. Uh, I like the freedom of not having that and not putting handcuffs on before I step to the lathe. So anyway, I'm just flattening the top here to uh, come up with something that I think will be cool. So you know, I, I've, I've really been kind of wrestling with the shape of this piece and the design. I don't know, it's just, it needed something. So I went out in my drying shed, and this is a piece of spalted maple. A very nice piece of spalted maple. And I'm thinking that I'm gonna glue this on the top here, and that's gonna be a little collar. So what I've done is mixed up a couple of ounces of the Fast Cure from Designer Epoxy. So I'm just going to slather it all over this and then we'll bring up the tailstock to act as a clamp and then um, we'll carry on with this tomorrow. This is a one to two hour epoxy but uh, it's the end of the day, had a late start today so we'll uh, carry on with this tomorrow once I get this epoxy on here. Yeah, that's on there pretty heavy. Uh, I pretty much wanted it that way just in case there's any little gaps. There's a couple little spots here in the back that I'm also filling as well. But uh, other than that, that's going to call it for today. That should give you a good idea of what we're going to be looking, what we're going to be working with. I don't know. It's growing on me, I guess. I guess we'll just have to see because I don't really know. All right, see you tomorrow.
So before we drill this out, I thought that I would show you my new polyurethane wheels that I got for the steady rest. They are considerably larger, uh, but they are considerably quieter <laughs> too. So that's 1100 RPM and if you follow my channel, uh, the last video that I did with these, it was, uh, well, it was a little loud, let's just say. So anyway, we're going to get this drilled out, then we'll set up the hollowing rig, the one-way um, hollowing rig, and we'll get the inside of this taken out and hopefully to its first coat of finish today. Love that spalted maple. If you're curious, I used a, an inch and five-eighths bit, I think is what I used to drill this piece out. I started drilling it out and realized the camera wasn't on, so <laughs> that's why we're just catching the tail end footage of this. Starting off with the single bent bar, or sorry, the double bent bar from the one-way captive system. Uh, I've shown that many times on the channel here, so I don't think that I need to cover that again. I did cut out, I would say, probably 75% of the footage of taking out the inside of this piece. There's just, it's so hard to film that uh, there's really no point in, in showing it. Actually, I don't even think I show the inside of this piece. I was having some real issues cutting it cleanly. I, I, and I don't know if it's because the epoxy hardened up uh, over the, the next couple of days after I've initially turned it the first time but I was having a real hard time getting a cut on it I don't know if it was just a combination of uh, the resin and the wood shavings as opposed to it being mostly resin or mostly wood solid wood uh, but anyway I used the double bent bar the boring bar and then of course the right angle bar or single bent bar in the taking out the inside of this Never used a laser. My laser has been giving me nothing but issues. Uh, I need to. I was there were some just suggestions as far as using a laser that you can put on the on a gun, and that there if they can take the shot of or take the shock of say a rifle or a gun firing, then they should be fine for this. And I agree with that. It's just a matter of uh, ordering one and getting one. I uh, just. A lot of things on my plate right now and most times it slips my mind and then when I go to use the rig I realize that oh yeah I should have ordered that so it's on my list of things to accomplish my ever-growing list I'm sure you can relate here I'm just adjusting the cutter on the bent arm and the other one is the double bent arm for those who are curious that allows you to get right over to that left corner and clean that out there uh, there's really not any other way to do it I really do like making these hollow forms they're, they're typically more on the artistic scale you can see how I, I turn the cutter a little bit more so that I can clean the very top of this but like I said earlier I was just having a real hard time getting a nice clean cut uh, I, I did sharpen all the cutters and it just didn't seem to work for me very well there initially when I went in I was I was feeling for the lumps and then once I found it position the cutter and then you can turn the lathe on because you know where you're where you're working uh, as you can see I'm just using uh, the thickness gauge that I use typically on my bowls and that seemed to work fine in here as well I was shooting for a wall thickness of about a half inch or 13 millimeters and uh, it's right around there just taking a few more finishing cuts on the very top of this and then I'll be able to work on the collar a little further. So I want it to curve the inside of this and then of course match it on the outside. I was having a real hard time uh, doing any cutting on the outside of this. That's the Phoenix from Hunter Tools. And I actually got my left arm through the opening in the steady rest in order to get in there to do this. It was, uh, it was actually quite difficult to do. Well, what do you think? Uh, I think that having this little piece of wood on here really, really helps this piece. But the, this this spalted wood is just, it's soft. So 
I'm going to harden it up with the Starbond Thin and use some accelerator to set it. And I'm going to really saturate it and uh, hit it with the accelerator. Then we'll be able to get a clean cut on it and then uh, move on to the outside shaping of this. You can certainly use epoxy to do this. You've seen me use a Pro Series here a couple of times now to harden up punky grain. Uh, the real benefit that this has over that is that it's super water thin, so it will flow in and solidify that grain. And uh, of course, you'll be able to move on to your project fairly quickly. I did have a cloth down below picking up all the stuff that was dripping off. There, I'll give that 15 minutes and then we'll be back at it. Now that that grain's hardened up, it's cutting a lot nicer, that's for sure. I, I did freshly sharpen my gouge before I went at this. This is another important thing that you should always do when you're trying to cut punky grain clean. Make sure you have a sharp gouge when you go at it. Uh, on the, um, I, I use the scoochie gouge again on the outside of this. It still was difficult to get in there and there I've got my left arm through the through the steady rest again. Uh, don't worry that I'm nowhere near any moving objects so it, it's fine. But uh, eventually we get this cut nice and clean and then I think I take some more finishing passes on the inside and then we'll be ready to move on to the final shaping on the outside. Notice me feeling for that little edge where I want to work at. All right, now I got rid of the steady rest. Uh, <laughs> still hard to get access to it, but it's better than with the steady rest on it, that's for sure. And then um, just taking a final few little passes here. For those who are curious, the wheels where they're rubbing on the form they did not leave any impression or indentation or anything like that. It just seemed to polish the resin. That's why it looks shinier than the rest of it, because I'm sure some people are probably wondering at home about that. But um, once that's done, we'll be able to sand this up and uh, I'll move on to the next part of this. I plan on doing a resin finish on the inside of this, so I thought it was important to sand the collar before we did that. All right, I just got done mixing up some Pro Series from Designer Epoxy. Yeah, we're gonna do resin coat on the inside. This is six ounces and it is more than enough. Uh, it's a two to one, so I find, uh, I don't know if three was gonna be enough, so then you got to go to six. Another reason for sanding the collar was the fact that I was going to be able to rub the Pro Series on this as well. And that will also help to harden up any of the punky areas that may be remaining. There, I'll leave that for 10 minutes. Then I'll flip it over and put it in my clean room where there's some heat. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. So this is the next day, just sanding back any of the unevenness left over from the epoxy. I think I started at like 180 or something like that. And this piece was sanded from the outside of it from 60 to 800. And the collar area, it was sanded to 800 eventually as well. Uh, but all I did was reach in as far as I could with the sandpaper in my fingers. And that's all that the all the sanding that I did on the inside of this anyway. That right angle sander really helps get underneath the underside of that collar as well. So before I put the finish on this and buff it and put the finish on it, I thought that I would just quickly talk about the look of this right now. And actually I don't mind the look of it. The matte kind of appearance of it. Uh, you can see kind of swirl marks from the shavings that are on edge. I don't know it's uh I mean up here is really cool I'm a little concerned that once it gets buffed 
and it becomes clear that you're not going to really like it as much. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'll leave it up to you guys, and you can let me know in the comments. But uh, I don't know. It's interesting. Um, it's growing on me. I didn't think that I would like this as much as I do. But we'll see after we get it buffed and get a coat finish on it. For the new people, before I put any finish on any of these resin pieces, I buff them with the Triple E buffing compound from the Be All buffing system. And that will just remove any fine scratches prior to any finish going on the projects that I make that have resin anyway. And the last step is to clean up with denatured alcohol so that we don't contaminate our finish and it adheres well. All right, this is what it looks like before the finish goes on. I have to admit that I think I like it better like this. <laughs> Let's see how it pops when the finish goes on. This is Waterlux Gloss. There it is in the light. I know I never really showed the inside, but there it is now for whatever it is you can see. The wood may need a second coat, but I don't think the rest of it does, but I'll give the rest of it a coat of finish as well, another second coat. I have to admit, it looks pretty cool. See you tomorrow for the second coat. The process is the same for every coat of finish that I put on my products that have resin anyway. Buff with the Triple E buffing compound. Clean it with the denatured alcohol. And that way it prepares the surface for the next coat of finish. Had to use some 4 steel wool on the inside of the collar. As far as applying the finish on the inside, I just reached in as far as I could, uh, and then that's it. Keep in mind there's a resin coat underneath of it too. Well, there you go, there's the second coat. Uh, I think that really all it needed was one coat, to be honest with you. I just wanted to cover the wood a little better than what it is. Be interesting to see what a lot of people think about this. All right, we'll see you tomorrow when we're doing the bottom. This is the next day and we're mounted on the vacuum chuck and I do have the complete system, chucking system, vacuum chucking system from One Way Manufacturing. And if you do any amount of bowls or work like this, I really highly strongly recommend getting one. It will speed up your production and um, it doesn't leave any marks on the surface of your the things you're working on. If you do find that you're having uh, marks left behind, then maybe it's the finish you're working and it isn't 100% cured, or there may be stuff embedded in the neoprene seal, so you might want to change it. Bottom was sanded to 600. This piece was so busy that I figured that I would do the engraving method this time, and it actually uh, works out quite nicely. Always a little leery when I'm doing this. I'm worried that with the vibration that it may cause a little bit of chipping out but uh, it went actually fairly smooth on this a lot of information to put on the bottom of this so i actually had to do some uh, in the center of it as well i do find that the engraving leaves kind of a raised surface so that i put it back on the vacuum chuck and sand it again to 600 and get it ready for its first coat of finish Let's hear the big news from Designer Epoxy. All right, well, big news from Designer Epoxy. I was talking to Gabriel, the owner of Designer Epoxy, a couple days ago, and he said, look, I want to do um, kind of a, a special thing on your channel. And so if you use code INLAYGYM at checkout with Designer Epoxy, here's what you're going to get from 1 July to 1 September of this year. You're going to get free shipping, within the continental US and Canada. You're gonna get a choice of five color bags, the bags you see me use on the channel here each week. 
And along with that, he's removing the one-time 10% off uh, restriction on the epoxy. So if you want to order uh, designer epoxy 100 separate times within that time frame, you're going to receive 10% off your order. So uh, this is really huge. I, I know that a lot of people are probably waiting to try designer epoxy. Well, now's the time. Uh, it's a fantastic deal. You see the results here virtually every week that I use it. So, you know, I'm really, really happy with this, this epoxy. And if you give it a try, I can't see how you wouldn't be either. All right, so thanks again, Gary Bill, for doing that. Uh, my subscribers and myself really do appreciate it. Let's talk about this week's project. Well, what do you think about this? Uh, I'll be honest with you. When I was pouring that resin, I really thought that I was wasting six liters of resin. But as, as I was going here, I'm like, you know, this thing is actually pretty darn cool. I realize it's probably very hard to see. I will light it and uh, show that at the end like I usually do with the rotating footage. Uh, as per normal, I'm out of time. So there's what the bottom looks like. Once the finish goes on, should be able to read that still pretty decently, but uh, just out of time. Uh, the dimensions on this are 8 inches across, and that's 20 centimeters. It's 5.5 inches tall, and that's 14 centimeters. And it's around a half inch thick, and that's 13 millimeters. Very unique piece, and it is sold. I'm really surprised. I've seen examples of this on the internet and typically it's full of air balls. Now it's either the vacuum chamber or it's designer epoxy. The long open time with the three days, you know, well, you know, you've got a couple of hours of open time. So that really allows a lot of bubbles to escape, but you know, it, it turned out really nice. I did actually hit one spot here with some glue. So I've got to kind of put another coat of finish all over the whole thing when I put the finish on the bottom. But other than that, it'll be ready to go to its new home. Set this down. Don't forget to put designer epoxy in the comments down below. And we are going to do the draw next week. So this will give you a last chance to, to, get your, um, to get your name into the draw. And like I said, we're going to do every 5,000 subscribers. Uh, from 1 July to 1 September, so hopefully we get a pile of subscribers in there and we can give away some more epoxy or Gabriel can give away some more epoxy from Designer Epoxy. So thanks again for that, uh, Gabriel. All right, uh, next week we're actually going to be doing uh, Back to the Basics. We're going to do an, another inlay video. I've got five coming up. Uh, all five are new and uh, they have some Starbond products. We have some Starbond products that we're going to use. And um, so anyway, come on back for that. Uh, so far, indications are that it's looking pretty good. And there are a lot of inlays that we re really haven't seen before. So please come on back for that. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends. That is the largest way for me to build my presence here on YouTube. I would really appreciate it. And of course, that thumbs up will always help us all. See you next week.